would be lovely. Got it. Thank you very much. Okay. And here we are. Optimized. And here we go. So hopefully you can see. Nice. That I have a, a little. Uh, just a little poll question that I'd like for everyone to, to join. If uh, you can, that would be great. You can, uh, if you have a phone, you can use the uh, QR code there. And if you don't, you can go to curie.live on your computer and use the pin. And once I see people have joined, I can, uh, I'll start the poll. And it's just a quick one minute little exercise as part of our 15 minutes. I say it's quick, but you know how that goes too, right? Okay. And I can see folks are joining. Thank you. All right, and then what we'll go ahead and do is I will bring this. Oh, where did I do? I pulled it out. There it is. Okay, <laughs> losing my screen is never a good plan. Okay, and if we're ready, then we're going to go ahead and start. <laughs> And here we go. I'm going to start the little. You guys, just a quick minute to go ahead and think about the quote. All right. I have to admit, it comes with music, but it drives me a little bit crazy. So I'm going to mute the music. <laughs> while you guys are are typing i don't want to talk too much because this is deep thinking <laughs> but i'm using um a tool called curiepod And this was just really meant to show um, very briefly how you can do this. Ta-da! <laughs> yes, also, I like that. Embrace AI. I love how that just popped up. Yeah, yeah, we need to do that. And you can see the results all right here. All right? Yeah. I know this keeping up with these AI tools. There are so many of them. In fact, that's something I, I want to, <laughs> technological apocalypse. <laughs> oh, these are great. These are all wonderful and great responses, and I love them all. And uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, 
grab the answers that we have and I will add them to uh, the PowerPoint presentation, which I will include a um, will be part of the recording also, but which I will also include um, the slides for so that everyone can see that at the at the end. But it's really neat that it also publishes that. There's also an option on CuriePod where you can have students after answering, then you can have them vote for their favorite answers so that they can see like which answer wins, you know. Um, if you're doing, depending upon the kind of poll that you do. So it's just kind of like one of those fun little AI tools. CuriePod can actually, you can put in the kind of thing that you, lesson that you're trying to create or that you're using, and it will actually give you activities that you can do with your students based on um, the topic and the lesson, um, in, including things like, you know, this, this fun little poll. All right, so um, moving on from this, Okay, so I will post um, the uh, results there when I'm done. So just in general, uh, one of the, the key benefits, of course, of using AI, oh, apparently I have the, or we have the captions on. I'm okay with that. Uh, but one of the uh, key benefits of um, using AI in, is how much time we can save. But as somebody else noted already, it's just amazing how much has cropped up in the last few months. I can't even keep up with them. I can't keep up with them all. I've been trying. Uh, and every day it's like, oh, look at this new shiny thing and look at this new shiny thing uh, that there have been um, so many. But the we really do need to um, pay attention to this as instructors because AI um, can really identify uh, patterns and insights that would take humans much longer to uncover. And it can do a lot of things um, with that data in a short amount of time that can really save us a lot of labor if we use it. And, wisely use it in, in a smart fashion in the areas that take us the most amount of time when we're doing our planning okay um so from mapping curriculum to creating assessments rubrics sometimes of sometimes rubrics can especially new rubric creation right can can take a lot of time when we're tweaking them and, and trying to do that so um, I would like to address uh, three key areas where we can um, use AI to help us plan. Overall course design, for starting with new courses, in lesson planning, for the, especially when we're trying to refresh and look at how can we, you know, update and make things new, um, for deeper learning. And, um, you know, we'll take a look at next steps and resources as well. So, keep in mind when you're using the ai resources that it's always for first draft it's not going to spit out the final finished product for you that's not what's going to happen but it will give you that first you, you know I'll do all that initial work get it give you something on paper that you can then work from and tweak instead of you needing to do sit and do all that in the first first place so you can use it if you have your course objectives, um, it's great at creating um, your course outline, right? The blueprint for, say, an online course, you know, um, or it doesn't even have to be online. It's like, you know, it's, oh, we need the, the course map for, we need to, to have um, the the course or if we need to suddenly do a condensed course like oh i need to take my normally you know the course i teach in the fall semester and we're going to teach it over the summer now and i need to condense it oh i can take i can take it and put that into the new schedule and have ai give me an uh that condensed like how would we break that up into the new um you know shortened schedule 
and then we can tweak it from there. It, it can save a lot of um, headache and a lot of, a lot of time. Um, creating the online content, or at least first draft online content in a new course, uh, at least can save some of that blank page <laughs> syndrome. Like I need to put, you know, uh, uh, the first page for my content in Canvas, and I don't know what to put on that first page necessarily. Uh, okay, it can help you overcome that. Uh, I have the Curie, Curie pod is listed here. Frizzle is a UDL specific, universal design for learning specific AI that will help you create UDL content. Eee, I love it. It's so exciting. I've been playing with it. Um, Magic School AI has a lot of uh, fun stuff in there. It's education specific. And then the last three are not. We have Bard, which is Google's AI. Bing chat, which I actually, okay, I, I don't, I'm, Bing is very busy, but if you just, when you, when you go to a, a Bing page and you scroll up, <laughs> it uh, brings down the chat and all the busyness goes away. But what I like about Bing chat is that it gives you all its sources. So you can, it's very easy to check the sources from Bing chat to see how, um, useful that information really is and of course our own you know the familiar open ai which is chat gpt so when you're creating online content um it's a really good idea i have found to put sometimes the content from that you generate from one into another just to um sort of see you know check your sources um always check your sources um it's useful for doing things like if you're going to create videos for online content for and say an online course, um, then especially if it's fully asynchronous, right? You can have it generate scripts for you. That saves a lot of time. Of course, you're gonna tweak those. Create your slide deck presentations. Oh, I need to create slides for my, for my presentation. Whether you're live, online, hybrid, whatever, it doesn't matter. It can help you create the there are lots of tools out there that will help you create slide decks including um you know curie pod will, will help with that and there are lots of others as well um create those rubrics right you can even enter your own rubric into something like um chat gbt or bard um and or bing and then ask it to score submissions <laughs> You can enter student submissions and ask it to score um, the submissions based on your rubric and, and make comments. And it will do so. And save a lot of time based on based on that. And again, not that you won't go in and tweak those things, but it can give you a baseline or a starting point. So it's uh, it again can save um, a lot of time on on some of those areas that uh, some people find to be very time consuming. Okay, sort of like having your own personal, you know, teaching assistant, right? All the time. So a, a lot of good uh, uses there. Um, when the, the real key you will discover if you've been playing with ChatGPT at all, or any AI, right? Um, generative AI. Oh, is it comes down to using the right prompts, prompt engineering is its own skill. And in fact, there are jobs now, actually some pretty high paying jobs, as I've discovered, which blows my mind, that people have to, to generate, to teach people how to generate prompts you have to get good at generating prompts but you have to have parameters about karen we are at time are but we... maybe just take another minute or so to wrap it up yeah yep okay i have that so make sure that you tell it who who it needs to be lesson topic level the audience pick something to refine right i have so other resources 
it, but not to worry. Everything else I've already actually sort of mentioned. Um, and in the end here, I have a great resource where I have all the resources, including um, all the tools that, that I've talked about. So that is awesome. And, and I will ask um, Martha to put into the chat the location where you'll be able to find this recording plus um, a handout that we will post from, from Karen. Um, so you can get all of these links and information. Um, with that, I'm going to stop recording and invite people to leave, but I'm sure Karen will hang out for a few that minutes. Wonderful. So if yeah. you have more questions or you want to ask something, um, don't hesitate. That sounds